Hello, and welcome back, or is it welcome? I don't, I don't really know. But hey, I know this isn't the normal form of content for this channel, and don't worry, the game related stuff is still here to stay, and well, I just really felt like making this, so hey, it's better than nothing. So today we're going to be cooking a New York style-ish pizza. I say New York style-ish because I don't really got a whole New York pizza place in my house. So you can see, like, I just got this standard oven behind me. It's nothing really special, but hey, we're going to be making from scratch here at home. The recipe I'll be using today is from Adam Raguzia. Uh, go check out his channel. I'll link the video down below in the description. And after this one, make sure to go check it out. And let's not delay any further. Let's just jump right into it. To make any good pizza, you'll need a fresh dough. But don't worry, we're making said dough in this very here video. For this dough, you will need, let's see, three cups of bread flour, one packet of active dry yeast, two tablespoons of olive oil, one teaspoon of salt, one tablespoon of white granulated sugar, and one cup of warm water. Now you're going to want to get yourself a nice wide bowl that can accommodate all of your ingredients. To this bowl you're going to add your one cup of warm water, one packet of active dry yeast, one tablespoon of sugar, and once all of those are added, you're going to want to mix this mixture and let it sit for about 15 minutes to let it bloom. It is important to let your yeast bloom to ensure that it is alive. As you can see here, our yeast has started to rise in these clumps to the surface. Once we have confirmed that our yeast is alive, you're going to want to add the rest of our ingredients to the bowl. Those being the one teaspoon of salt, two tablespoons of olive oil, and three cups of bread flour. Once we have added all of our ingredients to the bowl, we are going to want to stir them together until they form a cohesive dough. Once we have formed a cohesive dough, we are going to want to take the dough out of the bowl and place it on the counter for kneading. That's right, no stand mixers here. Alright, so it's time to get kneading. Now, it's important to have an extra glass of warm water and an extra bag of flour to be able to add to your dough to be able to get the consistency that we want. Now, today we're going to be going for a slightly sticky, tacky dough that will bounce back when touched. Once your dough gets too tough to knead by hand, form it into a nice taut ball and let it rest for 5 minutes. After each resting period, we will test to see if we could take a small piece of the dough and stretch it out thin enough to see light through it without it tearing. Eventually. Once our dough has passed the window test, as it will now formally be called, we are going to get four glass containers to store our dough in. These don't have to be glass containers, but these are just what I had on hand at the time. We will then be taking our dough and dividing it into four equal pieces to be placed in the containers. It is important to oil these containers as well to make sure that the dough does not stick to the sides while rising. We will then loosely cover these containers with saran wrap and let them sit overnight. After this overnight rise, we will then be placing them into the fridge to cold ferment from anywhere from 2 to 7 days. Now that we have finished making our dough and it's rising in the fridge, we're going to want to make a sauce. For this sauce, we are going to need blended tomatoes tomato paste, oregano, salt, and garlic powder. With these ingredients, we are going to get ourselves a blender, and then add roughly one cup of blended tomatoes, 
five drops of tomato paste, a generous helping of oregano, three pinches of garlic powder, and a few cracks of salt. We are then going to blend these together until they make a nice rosy color and have all combined. We are then going to get ourselves a Tupperware container to store the sauce for later. Now that we've actually finished making all the homemade parts of our pizza, now comes actually making it. For that we're going to need to get our dough, our sauce, some parmesan cheese, some mozzarella cheese, some pepperoni, and some more bread flour. With these, we could finally start putting our pizza together. Before we start putting the pizza together, we should go out and turn on our pizza oven to get it preheating to roughly 750 degrees Fahrenheit. Now we are going to want to get our bread flour and dust our pizza pan with flour to ensure that the dough doesn't stick. Now taking our dough out of our container, we are going to make sure that the bubbly side is facing up. After stretching out our dough and forming it to the pan, we're going to want to start topping. Starting with some tomato sauce. A nice thin layer of Parmesan cheese. A good heap of mozzarella cheese. And some pepperoni. Now that we've finished topping our pizza, we're going to want to take it outside to our preheated pizza oven and put it in there for about three minutes, closely watching the dough to ensure that it doesn't burn. Once the pizza is finished cooking, we're going to want to rush it inside and let it cool on a wire rack for about five minutes. But I can't be damned waiting that five minutes, so we're going to get a plate and cut it into four nice wide slices. Now after thoroughly burning the roof of my mouth, I can certainly say that this pizza surpasses many others that I've tried before. I hope that you people watching give this recipe a try and thanks for watching.